So I have two big pieces of news to talk to you guys about today. Uh, first off is Super Mario Maker 2. There is a direct for Super Mario Maker 2 landing tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That would be 5 p.m. Central for me. Hopefully I will be live streaming that one. Um, it does happen right at dinner time at my house, but I, I doubt it's going to be very long. I think I'll be able to... Uh, fit in a stream of it unless there is something going on that i'm currently not aware of uh so there you go super mario maker 2 direct tomorrow i, I wonder if this means we're not going to get a lot of information on super mario maker 2 at e3 or maybe this is just the start of the hype cycle for super mario maker 2 to come out at the end of june as is already scheduled so it's definitely worth paying attention to and all that jazz now before i get into the next story i want to remind all of you to enter our nintendo switch super smash bros ultimate bundle giveaway through the gleam.io link down in the description it's absolutely free to enter uh and hey if you like this video drop a like hit subscribe and let's get into the next story and that deals with bayonetta 3 yeah that's right we're actually talking about bayonetta 3 something that i didn't think we would be talking about until the game awards at the end of this year now bayonetta 3 was unveiled at the game awards back in 2017 but it was just a little cgi trailer and hideki kamiya the director producer all that stuff behind the bayonetta series at platinum games was asked on twitter uh when he or when we could expect to hear about bayonetta 3 and he left well the following tweet and the big thing to take away from all of this is it says next week on a game site. Uh, so, yeah, sounds like uh, we're going to be seeing Bayonetta 3 next week on some game site. IGN, GameSpot, Game Informer. It's probably a major site. Uh, so stay tuned for that. that that's clearly uh, probably a gameplay reveal, you assume, because we got a little CGI last time. Probably gameplay this time. Uh, and while Bayonetta 3, I do not believe, is slated for this year and has not been announced as a 2019 game, still getting some news out there about it, getting people to go, hey, look, we have all these great games coming to Switch, but don't forget about Bayonetta. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you know, I can see why you wouldn't maybe talk about it at E3, because it might get overshadowed by some of the other games, especially if it's a 2020 title. Uh, but you, you tease it now, you could show a little trailer next week, and then, hey, look, you know, hit the Game Awards up the end of the year, get people ready for games for Switch in 2020. I think that's a, a nice little path for marketing for Bayonetta 3. So, uh, again, Bayonetta 3 is definitely at least on track, what it seems, for whenever they plan to release it, because it hasn't been officially delayed, because it doesn't have an official release date. Uh, but still, cool, Bayonetta 3. I mean, I'm, I'm probably more excited for this than the Mario Maker 2 stuff, just because I know what Mario Maker is, right? I, I think all of us at this point in the history of mario i have a great understanding of mario maker you know we had super mario maker on wii u and 3ds and you got to make your own mario levels and it was cool there was limited limitations with the tool set but you could do a lot of really cool things with the tool set from music levels and puzzles and crazy difficult um celeste style level building uh lots of crazy stuff that you could do with mario maker and it's only going to get even crazier in you know mario maker 2 because with the slopes and the different warp pipes and uh different um settings and new costumes and new abilities being added in there from like 3d world and it's going to be very interesting to see what people come up with i'm not someone who's ever been super creative with these builder style games but i do enjoy playing some crazy levels uh although i admit the celeste style super difficult having to spin mario non-stop in the air bouncing on top of a spike uh, is not something that I've ever been good at, <laughs> but um, it's obviously something that is very entertaining to watch. I think I've watched so many Bob Wolf live streams of Mario Maker at this point that uh, my head just is still spinning from the amount of times that Mario spins on screen for those difficult levels. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I get being excited for it, of course, because if you're really into Mario Maker like Bob Wolf and, and many of you guys probably are, the Direct tomorrow is going to be huge, and I'm going to be watching it, and we'll see if they can uh, get me super excited. I think it's going to be a really good game. Honestly, I really was hoping they would do like a Zelda Dungeon Maker uh to follow up mario maker but hey more mario maker is always good but bayonetta 3 is a game that we really don't know anything about is it going to be really different from the prior games is it going to be a continuation bayonetta's back with the long hair like she was in bayonetta 1 but not in bayonetta 2 uh is there going to be any crazy nintendo crossovers like nintendo you know and, and platinum did in the past with the different costumes with the link and the samus heck there was that little star fox little side content uh are we going to just 
see more of Bayonetta? Is this just going to be, you know, Bayonetta as we've seen in the past, but just more of it? Is there going to be drastic changes? Are we going to see a future set up for Bayonetta 4 or Bayonetta 5? Like, are, are we, is this the end of Bayonetta? Is it just going to be a trilogy? I think there's a lot of unanswered questions that, you know, first thing first, we got to see what the game looks like on Switch. Uh, is it, you know, a big visual upgrade over what we got on Wii U, or is it just looking more like the Wii U game? Again, Switch is more powerful than a Wii U, but, you know, the exact comparisons aren't 100% for sure known in terms of what you're able to do uh, at maximum value on both chipsets. So I'm very curious to see what Platinum Games does. I love everything that Platinum Games has ever put out on a Nintendo platform, uh, and I'm sure you do too. So, hey, Super Mario Maker 2 Direct coming tomorrow. Uh, supposedly next week we'll probably see a gameplay unveiling for Bayonetta 3. Uh, things are starting to ramp up, guys. You can tell E3 is around the corner. Uh, if you haven't checked out our first uh, week of E3 hype uh, in our podcast, I want you to go. I'll put a link down in the description for that. I want you to go check that out. Uh, Eric and I go over many things, including Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Uh, if you guys are really interested in that, we had an in-depth conversation on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which was very fascinating. Eric's actually kind of a veteran at that game, so uh, it was very nice uh, hearing from him and hearing about his excitement levels and the things he likes and don't likes about the prior games and what he has seen in the gameplay we've gotten so far of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Uh, we also talked a little bit about the ESA and E3 in general because, well, the ESA uh, appears to be in a little bit of trouble, whereas E3 is still a highly profitable venue, but obviously it's losing certain things, like Sony's not there this year. Uh, we talk a lot about that and how maybe things could be fixed, if they even need to be fixed, if there even is a real real problem, or if the problem's more perception than reality. Uh, it's a really fun conversation, and uh, I hope you guys go tune in and watch it. It's actually one of our better podcast episodes and uh, we have more to come. There's a lot of stuff leading up to E3 here. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, as a reminder, we are attending E3 this year and as um, attending E3, we do have some content plans and uh, I've said it, I think on live stream, but not so much in a standalone video. So here you go. Uh, we will be playing every single game that is available at E3 to play on Switch, be it indie or you know first party or third party or whatever. We will play everything. Uh, we will hopefully have footage of everything we're allowed to record footage of. We will have hands-on impression videos of everything we play. Uh, if we are able to record gameplay clips, uh, we will have put gameplay clips up of all the games that we play, hopefully of us playing them, if not other people playing them that are showing off a similar experience to our own. Uh, and then we also plan to review or uh, check out Nintendo Switch accessories. Uh, there are a lot of accessory companies that come out uh, to these uh, places. And last year, we actually got to try out and look at some of those accessories, but we never bothered to record any footage for it. Uh, this year, I think it would be cool to kind of check out some of those accessories, get on camera, talk about things a bit, and see where it goes from there. So uh, I'm pretty excited about all of that, and I hope you're excited too. Uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Nintendo Prime, sticking with me through uh, a very weird start to this month of May. Uh, but hey, we're in that build-up to E3 now. Super Mario Maker 2 Direct tomorrow. Ban out of 3 news. E3 around the corner in three and a half weeks or so. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you guys for sticking by Nintendo Prime. And I'll catch you in the next video.